So for the first test cut, I want to show you a traditional piece of American cherry. And you can see here one side is relatively straight, but the other side is very broken. Uh, yeah, typical piece of old wood. And this face here, normally we would have a big problem with something like a feather guide because it just can't keep constant pressure on the side of this board. So, it also is a little bent. So, we'll set up the stock guides. Again, using only this face here and not on the rubber here. Pull it backwards. So, I want to cut 150 millimeters from here, so I'll just quickly step over and set up the incra positioner. Okay, lock that in place. And set that just, you can feel the pressure already as you just put that in to, to set up the cut. I'll just put on some muffs. Turn on the vacuum cleaner and away we go. Push check. Fine job. So if I wanted to use this for a draw front or something, you can see here now that I've got this sap wood. This is the lighter color wood here. I don't really want to use that. So that's about 20 millimeters. All I have to do is, excuse me, step up the incra by 20 millimeters. And take, now I've got a nice flat surface here. I can just pop that under there, make a second cut. Now the great thing about the stock guides is it's always forming a constant pressure on this surface here. And as you can see, even though that was bent, that's actually made a really, really fine job. Yeah, but now comes more tests. So, now I've got this piece of wood here. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but it's quite thin. And also with an edge here that absolutely no featherboard could ever handle. So, let's see if we can cut this. So, I've already estimated that I need a cut to take all of this horrible wood here away. I need 50 millimeters. Now, because of the blade protector here, you're going to need to move these stock guides away from the blade protector, but this should be no problem at all, because the stock guides will work in whichever distance you have here between the blade, because they're always providing a constant pressure. And if I come here to, that's 50 there, you see the stock guide here, this one, this rear one here is right in behind the blade protector, but it shouldn't be a problem. Move this one a bit more forward. It's feeding in slowly at the front. I'm just 
pushing this gin with my hand. Now comes the push bit. see that it's actually pulled the whole thing through at a constant diameter. It's just, yeah, it's really wonderful. And that, I can throw away. Now I have a, another little tricky thing. I don't know if you can see it. I've got a piece of plywood here. This face is square and this face is everywhere. I just want to take this off. Now again with the featherboard, because of the diameter or the thickness of the wood, you'd have a real problem actually putting enough constant pressure on there to hold it. Hmm. Let's see what this does. So. I'll take this out to 250. And again, I just want to adjust, just drop it down. Same on the other one. Okay, let's try that. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking off a distance here of 250 millimeters. So again, the stock guides have pulled everything in towards the fence. It's left me with a really nice cut. But there's still more. <coughs> so, I often work with, well, if you can see this, I'm not sure if you can see it, big pieces of rough sawn timber like this. And if you can see here, you've got the hardwood, which is the dark color. And you've got the sap wood, which is the light color, which I don't want to use. And normally on a, on a small table saw like the PTS-10, it's really tricky to keep this all in place. Because this in itself weighs around hmm, 7, 8 kilos. So let's see what this can do. The first thing is to take off one edge and then that gives you a, a very level playing surface to work with for the future. So let's see what we can do. Now what I have to do here is because it, it, this is actually not a problem with the um, with the stock guides. You can see here that my table saw just is not big enough to handle such a big piece of wood. So I'm cheating a little bit. Normally I would not recommend cutting the thinnest piece against the table saw blade but unfortunately today we have no choice. 
but I'm quite sure that my stock guides will do the trick. So I've already measured here, I need to take 25 millimeters off the surface, this end surface here. As you can see, the fence and everything is really quite close to the blade protector and everything, but the stock guides actually, because they're so adjustable, it's actually quite nice. So you have to pull the stock guides away from the blade. In order to measure here, we've got 36 millimeters. Just need to undo that and just push it there. That's the first one done. Excuse me. Come around to the back. And there's the next one. So with the height adjusted, now I can come up to 25 millimeters here. need to up the blade height a bit. Okay, so we're ready to go. Normally, that would be really quite a dangerous experience, but to be honest, these little babies have done a fantastic job. We've got a very nice clean piece of wood, no risk of kickback, because once again, the rollers only roll in one direction, and even ripping in this direction with such a heavy and thick piece of wood, actually went extremely, extremely well. Okay, back soon. <laughs> 